Hi, welcome to Naresh Shetty. This is Kishore, and today we are going to continue the dynamic memory allocation in C. In previous session, we have discussed how to create a one dimensional dynamic array. In previous example, I have given how to design or how to create a one dynamic one dimensional array, and today I am going to cover how to design a two dimensional dynamic array by using new operator. Okay. Now, our program is how to work with uh, two dimensional dynamic arrays in C++. Next, now in this example, I am going to use new and delete operators for creation and deletion of dynamic two dimensional array. And here, one important point we have to notice. What it is means, our example is what? Dynamic two dimensional arrays. Generally, Two dimensional array means what? It is having both rows and columns. That means nothing but a matrix concept. Generally, in matrix, we are having both rows and columns. Here also, similar to that, we have to maintain both rows and columns. Then, what is the thing? Okay, here, what is the thing? Then, the thing is here. We have to do only one thing. First, uh, we have to create a dynamic pointer okay means a dynamic two dimensional array okay here we have to create dynamic two dimensional array now then we need a double pointer first of all why because here we have to maintain both the rows address as well as column address that's why we have to go for double pointer as well as we have to create a array of matrix okay here one more important concept is we have to go for array of pointer. Why? Because when array is used, it is able to store okay, several values. When it is pointer type array, see this what I am going to discuss. Array. array is generally used for what purpose? To store several values at one place. Now, pointer is used for what? To storing the address of another variable. Pointer is generally used to store the address of another variable variable. Now, here we have to store both row address as well as column address. That is why we have to go for array of pointer. When array of pointer is used, what happens under one name, we can store several address. That is why what we have to do is here we need a double pointer as well as as well as okay, dynamic uh, means two dimensional array. That means, uh, Area of pointers. Now I am going to implement this one. Okay, how to construct the dynamic two-dimensional array? First of all, we have to go for general declarations, means header file declaration. Okay, these are the common header files. One is for C out and C in. Another one is for C L R S C R get C H. Next, now main program started. Okay, now the main program start. Later, I am going to declare one double pointer. Now, int double star p. Generally, star p is called what? Pointer variable. Now, double star indicates p is a double pointer because of p is going to store the row address and another pointer indicates column address also. That means, that is pointing another pointer address. That is why we need the double star p. Next, uh, nr. nr represents uh, number of rows here. N C, N C represents a number of columns because of we are having both rows as well as columns. That's why we have to mention the number of rows and number of columns. That's why N R and N C. Next, R comma C. Here R represents a row value, C represents a column value. Next, now watch this. Here C L R S C R, screen cleared. Okay. Here CLRSCR is used. When CLRSCR is used, total screen is going to clear. Later, we have to mention how many rows and columns are required. That is why C out enter number of rows and columns. Now, C in. Okay. Here, I am going to enter number of rows and columns. We have to input the data. That is why C in NR NC. Now, I am going to enter number of rows and number of columns. For example, number of rows 2. 
and number of columns 3. That means, I want to design a 2 by 3 matrix. And now, here what happened? First of all, we have to allocate the memory for rows. And up to this, how the memory is allocated, I am going to give you a picture, say this. Now, it is the RAM and it is the stack area and it is the heap area because of always dynamic memory allocated in heap area, always dynamic memory allocated in heap area. Now, first point, it is the point and here NR value, suppose it is the NR value and here NC value. Now, first of all these variables are created in stack. Next, NR value for example 2, that means I want to create 2 rows with 3 columns, that is why NR value 2, NC value 3. Now, here what happens is this enter number of rows and columns. I have entered number of rows, number of columns and for example, number of rows are 2, number of columns are 3. Now, we have to allocate the memory. Now, first of all, we have to allocate the memory for rows in a 2 dimensional array. Remember this, whenever we are working with a 2 dimensional array, first we have to allocate the memory for rows. That is why, here I am going to write a statement like this, P equal to, okay. here I am going to write like this, P equal to new, new is the operator name and which kind of array we require, int, okay. that is why P equal to new int okay, star nr. Just before we have discussed that, we have to allocate the memory for rows and here how many rows? 2 rows required, that is why my requirement array. Generally, it indicates what size, now star indicates okay, pointer array. Generally, we are using square bracket for array concept and here nr value is what? 2 actually nr value 2. Now, star indicates what? Point. That is why now pointer array created and it is able to hold integer data okay. and the address is passed to p. And now, how many rows? 2 rows of integers. 2 rows of integers means 2, 2 bytes. Now, here 4 bytes memory allocated. Now, it is the 0 row, it is the first row and every byte is having one address particular address. For example, 65500, it is the base address of this row and 65502, now it is the second row address because of integer, generally integer occupies what 2 bytes and 500, 501, here 502, 503. Next, after allocating the memory, the base address passed to P, here base address 65500, it is stored in P. Now, this one is going to store in P, that is why P value becomes 65500. Next, now the rows memory created and the row address is passed to P. Later, we have to allocate the memory for columns. Now, watch this, for R equal to 0, R less than NR, R plus plus. Now, what happens? R value started with 0 nr value 2, 0 to 1, less than 2 means 1, means 2 times. This loop is going to repeat 2 times and here I am going to write like this, p of r equal to new int of nc. Okay. Now, nc value is what? 3, 3 what? Integers, 3 integer require how many bytes? 6 bytes and it is created newly and the base address passed to p of r value, actually in our example r value 0. Now, p of 0 means nothing but this one, means 65500 plus 0 into 2, that gives 65500, there the first address is stored. That is why here what happened? 6 bytes memory allocated, okay. now 6 bytes and each byte is having one address. Suppose 510, 512, 514. Now, this address is passed to 0 row 65510. That is why, in when this line is executed, 6 bytes memory allocated and the base address is stored in P of 0. That is why, 
now 0 row is storing 0 column address. Now, as per index 0, 1, 2. Now, in 0 row, 0 column address is stored. Okay, fine. Later, R value incremented. R value becomes what? 1. Now, P of 1. P of 1 is nothing but this one. It is going to store another 6 because of new int of nc. nc value once again 3. 3 integer required 6 bytes. Means, uh, another 6 bytes memory allocated and the base address passed to P of R. R value 1. That is why P of 1. Here the address is stored. Now, 65,000. 516, 518, 520. Now, this address is stored here 65516. Now, watch this. Here, P is a pointer. Later, we have created a array of pointers. Later, we have allocated the memory and the base address is passed. Here, how many cells created? 6. 2 by 3 matrix. 2 by 3 matrix generally contains 6 elements means 6 cells. Now, we are able to store 6 elements here. Now, memory allocation completed. It is how the memory is allocated for a dynamic 2 dimensional array. Next, now the memory is ready. Next step is what? We have to enter the data. Now, I am going to write like this. C out enter n r into n c elements. Okay. Now, n r value 2, n c value 3, 2 into 3 6, that is why meaning enter 6 elements. Now, we need a loop r value 0, r less than n r, r plus plus. Now, this loop is going to repeat how many number of times? 2 times and next for c equal to 0, c less than n c, c plus plus. Now, n c value 3 means 3 times. Here, when r value 0, when r value 0, how many times? 3 times and when r value 1, another 3 times. That is why, here I am going to use c in p of r c. Here, r and c values are what? 0, 0, 0, 0, first value stored here, next c plus plus 1, second value, third value. After 3 times R value becomes 1, 0, once again C value. Now, 4th value, 5th value, 6th value. Now, input process also completed. Now, the task is we have to print the data. Then, C out elements R. Now, I am going to write once again for loop R value 0, R less than N R, R plus plus. Next, for c equal to 0, c less than n c, c plus plus. Okay. Now, watch this r value 0, c value 0. 0, 0 means 10. We have to print that one. c out p of r c and n s. n s means ending space. Now, first p of 0, 0 printed. 0, 0 means 10 printed, one space also printed. Now, here how many times it is repeated? N c times. N c time means 3. That means 3 values printed. 3 values means 10, 20, 30. After 3 times, now R plus plus. Before that, use C out N L. Okay. Here, when N L is used, what happens? Cursor move to next line. Means, in first line, 10, 20, 30 are printed. Cursor move to next line. Uh, when cursor move to next line means R value incremented. R value becomes 1. 1 means this address. In this address which one is there? 40. Means another 3 times. 40, 50, 60. Uh, next R value becomes 2. 2 less than 2 false. Program stopped. When program is stopped, we are going for delete. Delete P. Now, the memory is released and the program also stopped. Get CH program main close. Here, main is open, main close. It is how the memory is allocated for a dynamic two dimensional array. It is the procedure to create a dynamic two dimensional array. In dynamic two dimensional array, the main point is one double pointer. Second one is what? Array. We have to create a array of pointer. That is why we need both the double pointers and array concept then only we can finish the 
dynamic two dimensional array ok. It is how to work with the dynamic two dimensional array ok. Thank you for watching in next session we are going to continue the remaining. Thank you. Thank you.